think about the military community is that there's a myth that mindfulness is inherently passive and that, you know, if I practice mindfulness, I'm going to lose my edge or I'm not going to be as strategic. And what we find is that when the mind is aware, then we are our most skillful. So we're smarter, actually, and we take more wise, compassionate action when we practice mindfulness. So it's not necessarily passive. The military lifestyle is all-encompassing. It's difficult, but rewarding. Dynamic. Very, very dynamic. Unpredictable. You are in the Canadian Armed Forces or a family member connected to the military. You know the lifestyle can be a challenge. The military lifestyle is always changing. In this podcast, we explore the world of deployments, postings, and transitions. This is the Military Lifestyle. Here's your host, John Shaboon. Mindfulness is everywhere nowadays. Schools, companies, smartphone apps, even the military. Mindfulness has gone mainstream for some. It's a buzzword, big business, a product. If you strip away all the packaging, what exactly is it and how can you apply it to military life? Patricia Galaxy has taught mindfulness for over 20 years, including at Royal Roads University. Patricia, tell me, what actually is mindfulness? Well, John, that's probably the most important question because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about what mindfulness is and what it's not. When somebody's offering something like mindful tech or, you know, mindful drinking, I've seen that. It's really important that people are clear about what mindfulness is. The sort of operational definition of mindfulness is that mindfulness is the awareness that arises when we pay attention on purpose, so intentionally, in the present moment without judgment. For example, if I was to ask you right now to just notice what's going on in your own mind, to just be aware of what you're thinking in this moment. And so, of course, because we're recording a a podcast, it might be like, you know, how's the sound or, you know, what's my next question going to be? And there is the possibility for all of us, without exception, to bring awareness to what we're thinking without judging it. So even if in the mind right now there is judgment, there's a possibility of just being aware of like, oh, I'm judging. I'm thinking that the sound is too loud or too quiet. And so there's judgment going on in the mind, but the awareness that's knowing that you're judging isn't judging. It's just kind of noticing. And I I say it's an operational definition because mindfulness is something that arises when those conditions are present. So when you're paying attention, so the average adult attention span right now is five to eight seconds. It's not very good. So most of the time we're in a million different places at once. We're lost in thought. And the implications for that on our physical, mental, emotional health is really significant and negative. So then paying attention and then on purpose, which is being more intentional about where you're placing your attention and even what is going on in your own mind in the present moment. So there's this present moment awareness that has this quality of non-judgment, or you can say receptivity or allowing that, oh, this is interesting. This is what's going on in my mind right now. So mindfulness is not the same as the word meditation. Those are two different words. And the word meditation just means to cultivate. So there's as many different kinds of meditation as there are probably people in the military. The word mindfulness means to remember. That's one way of thinking about the etymology of that word. And what you're remembering is your present moment experience. However, I would say that it's important to understand too that mindfulness is more than just being present. One of my teachers says, if you think about like a golden retriever, they're very present, you know, they're very like in the moment, um, but they're not necessarily mindful. So mindfulness is much more than just being in the present moment. There's also a quality of observing to ask the question, you know, what are you thinking right now? There has to be a kind of an observing quality of mind. So you're present, but you're observing. There's an acceptance in that there's a sense of in this moment, it's like this. So, so those are the, the fundamental aspects of what mindfulness is. You mentioned mindfulness and meditation, and definitely that's, I think, one of the, the myths out there that mindfulness equals meditation. Are there any other myths that might exist about 
what it is, what it isn't? Yes, that's a really good question, John, because yes, there's a lot of myths. I think there's a lot of people that are, you know, hanging up a shingle. Like you said, it's kind of big business and a lot of people are just kind of using the word mindfulness, but in a misinformed way. And so it makes sense that people are skeptical when they hear the word mindfulness because there's such deep misunderstanding of what it actually is. One of the myths of mindfulness that's really important is that mindfulness is not asking us to stop thinking. So a lot of people would say, I can't practice mindfulness. You know, I've got to, how do I clear the clutter from my mind? Or how do I get rid of thoughts? Or I can't stop thinking. And so I can't practice mindfulness. But mindfulness is not about stopping thinking. So that's one of the myths. It's really about how we're relating to what's going on in the present moment. The other myth about mindfulness is that mindfulness is relaxation, so that we're trying to relax. Mindfulness is not necessarily relaxation. I mean, there is relaxation that comes when you shift the relationship that you have to your heart and your body and your mind in the present moment. But really what mindfulness is asking us to do is to tune into our internal landscape of what's going on in your mind and your body and your heart. And that landscape is always changing. And so sometimes that landscape's relaxed and sometimes it's full of agitation and sometimes it's distracted. And mindfulness is the practice of bringing awareness and compassion to that present moment experience, not to repress anything or make anything happen. There is also the myth that mindfulness is an escape from reality, that, you know, it's kind of this navel gazing escape from reality. And I would suggest in my experience that mindfulness is the exact opposite. So most of the time we are escaping from reality. We're lost in thought. Our minds are distracted. We're not fully present. We're missing our lives. Whereas mindfulness is actually asking us to tune in in a very uh, clear and lucid way to what's actually happening in the present moment, not just in our external environment, but also in our internal environment. So I could go on, but I'd say those are some of them. And I guess maybe I'd say one more that's relevant. If you think about the military community is that there's a myth that mindfulness is inherently passive and that, you know, if I practice mindfulness, I'm going to lose my edge or I'm not going to be as strategic. And one of the groups that I've been working with for the last five, six years are CEOs or different levels of leadership. What we find is that when the mind is aware, then we are our most skillful. So we're smarter, actually, and we take more wise, compassionate action when we practice mindfulness. So it's it's not necessarily passive. What does it mean to be a mindful person? Can anybody learn it? Is it that easy? Absolutely. Everybody can learn it. So I would suggest we're already uh, aware. It's just bringing awareness to that. In fact, Homo sapiens sapien, which is our species, so this takes it out of any kind of woo-woo, touchy-feely thing, is that, you know, Homo sapiens sapien means simply one who knows that they know. This capacity of human beings to be aware of their own minds and their own hearts and their own bodies is inherent in, in every individual, whether or not we train in that. So right now, I would suggest that most of us are training in distraction. Whatever we train in is going to become the nature of the mind. So it's going to become the inclination of the mind. So if we train in in having the mind be really distracted and uh, numbing out, we'll get better at that. And if we train in being aware in the present moment without judging what's happening so that we can be more skillful in how we act. Okay, going back to the stereotypes, you know, that you need to have, you know, you need to purchase this, you need to purchase that, you know, you need, you need your yoga pants, you need your yoga mat, you sandalwood. Yeah, you don't need any of that. One of the other reasons there's skepticism around mindfulness is there's the tendency for us to lump together mindfulness practice with every spiritual tradition that, you know, has ever arisen. And so, you know, like sandalwood, yoga pants and whatever. But mindfulness is not any of those things. The definition, that's why I said it's the most important question is the first one you asked, which is what is mindfulness? So being able to pay attention in the present moment without judging is available to you and to me right now in this moment and to everybody who's listening to this. So if you're listening to this right now and you're walking or you're sitting, can you become aware of the fact that you're walking or sitting or aware of how you're feeling or aware of what's going on in your mind? 
and and that's all that's required. I would suggest that being skeptical of anything that's kind of gimmicky that you know you need this thing to to practice mindfulness, I'd say um ask a lot of questions and and maybe um skepticism is warranted in those cases. So how can mindfulness be of value to the military communities? Thinking military members, military family members, how it can be integrated into their work? How can it be integrated into their daily lives? Especially thinking of the military lifestyle, deployments, relocations, transitions in their life. My experience working with the military communities is that mindfulness has a real place that can be helpful in in these communities. So working with the families, one of the pieces of feedback that I received in in working with families is the the area of what's called mindful self-compassion, which is bringing compassion and kindness to our own difficult emotions. So the families that support and also the military individuals themselves, just as being a human being, we have a lot of different emotions. And so being able to be kind change the way that we're relating to our emotions, whether that be anxiety or depression or anger or irritation or judgment, whatever the emotion is, that it's normal, that it's human, and that we can change the way we relate to it so that we're not repressing it and we're also not acting it out. I would suggest that mindfulness impacts deeply all of our relationships when we can be more aware and compassionate of our own hearts and our own minds and our own bodies, we're able to offer that to others. Really importantly, mindfulness, when we think about the military and we think about action and taking strategic action, taking wise action, when action comes from a place of calm, when it comes from a place of non-reactivity, that's when we're our smartest selves. So, so we're actually taking our most strategic actions when we're practicing mindfulness. The benefits are infinite. How do you get started with mindfulness? Can somebody with a a busy lifestyle integrate it into their lives quite easily? I heard recently somebody say that a dentist who was trying to get people to floss their teeth and asked, how do you get people to floss their teeth? And the dentist responded by saying, just floss one tooth. Because by the time you get the floss out and you floss one tooth, then you're kind of committed. And, And I think with mindfulness, it's the same thing. Just a small step. So even if you're listening to this right now, if you're to just set the intention to feel this next breath in and this next breath out and to stay with the sensation of that there is actually a body that's listening to this and the sensations that are here. So bringing that into the present moment, the breath and mindfulness practice is universal anchor. It's not the only, we can use sounds, we can use many different things, sensations in the body. But just feeling this next breath in and feeling this next breath out. And then I would suggest setting a little bit of time every day. And even it can be five minutes. It doesn't have to be a long time to just sit quietly and setting the intention to feel the breath. If that feels like too much or if that feels overwhelming, you could take that practice into a routine activity like washing the dishes, going for a walk, brushing your teeth, taking a shower. And I was just talking to somebody yesterday who said that, you know, every morning now I've been, we've been working together a little bit on mindfulness. And he said every morning now, what he does is that when he takes a shower, he just uses that time to focus on his breath, or it might be in conversation with somebody. So when you're listening to your partner or your children, or you're at work is, is actually using some of that time to focus on the breath. And as you do this, you will notice that it's not multitasking. It's not like I'm going to be focusing on my breath and there's this other thing that's happening. When we focus on our breath, and you can just try it right now as you're listening and just set the intention to feel this next inhale and feel this next exhale, we're not dividing our attention. We're actually focusing our attention. Most of the time, our mind is not here. And when we can sense into the breath, bringing our mind and our body together, which is the one of the foundations of mindfulness. So I, I would say that's a great way to start. You don't need to buy anything. You don't need to necessarily invest a lot. For me, mindfulness, the way you're describing it, sounds like just a way of being and a way of being present. Yes. Everything that we do or fail to do begins in our own mind. And one of my favorite things about mindfulness, very favorite things, is that it's 100% see for yourself. So it's a practice. The only way you'll ever learn anything truly about mindfulness is to practice it. 
so I can talk about it. You can listen about it. You can read, you can, you know, watch movies, but really it's only your present moment experience of practicing mindfulness. And then you see for yourself, does it make a difference or not for the skeptical minds? Those are my favorite because it's very much, if you have a curious mind, if you have a mind that's open to learning and seeing for yourself, then mindfulness is, is definitely a practice that will show you its benefits quite quickly. I want to bring Sandra Pernard in for a deeper military perspective. Now, Sandra, she's the deployment coordinator at the MFRC, but she's also completed the mindfulness training with Patricia at Royal Roads University. So can you tell me, how can mindfulness be of value to military members? You know, mindfulness could help you be present in your job so that if you're having to stare at a radar screen or whatever you're having to look at for a long time, you can, mindfulness can help you be more present so that your mind doesn't wander away. Or it'll also make you more conscious of when your mind is wandering and help you to refocus faster. You know, we all sort of catch ourselves daydreaming from time to time. Sometimes you're like, how long have I been daydreaming about whatever it may be, where with mindfulness, the more you practice it, maybe it's through meditation, maybe it's through mindful movement. There are many different types of mindfulness. The most common is usually meditation. And what the mindfulness meditation can help you do is train your brain to be more conscious of what is happening. So it is more aware when it drifts off and you can bring yourself back faster if that's your goal. So it is about staying in the present moment, but it is also about when you're not fully present that you are aware that you're not fully present and you can bring yourself back. And for military members, they have to stay focused for long periods of time on specific tasks. It may also help with stress reduction. So if you're finding that, you know, as a military member, you're stressed, lots of military members will work out. Physical exercise is a great stress reductor. You can do physical exercise in a mindful way and add another layer to it. But also it could be just about learning how to take three deep breaths before you react to a stressful situation. Taking three deep breaths before you answer somebody who's maybe challenging you, you know, in the workplace. It's taking three deep breaths before just flying off and saying something that you may regret. Mindfulness can be as simple as learning to take three deep breaths before you react. How can it be of value to a military family member? For military families, I mean, some of it will be the same as for military members, reducing stress, keeping focus. There's lots of mindfulness programs for children. So mindful movement for adults or mindful movement for children can help with stress reduction. It can help to add concentration levels to children. They're able to focus on their schoolwork or they're able to focus on whatever it is that we're wanting them to focus on. Anybody is able to learn to not just react to whatever is coming at them, but to actually stop again and take a breath or also to be aware of what's happening in your body. So if you're facing a stressful situation or you're facing, you know, you know, you're about to react in a way that maybe isn't the most positive, then being mindful means that you're able to feel that in your body and maybe be able to eventually stop that reaction before it happens. So again, it's about being present. You're able to feel when your cheeks get red and you get flushed and because maybe you're a little embarrassed or you can feel that your heart rate is increasing because you're stressed or angry or scared. So for family members, there's a lot of times when you're stressed, it could be stressful to be a family member, particularly around deployment, or maybe you've just gotten that posting message that tells you you're about to move to the other side of the country. Lots of things are going to happen to you because you're in the military lifestyle. And mindfulness can help you to manage your reactions to those things in a more positive way. And it's also, I think, about learning to be kind to yourself. It's learn, give yourself a break when you do have that normal reaction to bad news or good news or whatever it may be, you're now able to be a little bit more gentler with yourself. Mindfulness helps you to quiet that internal voice that maybe isn't so positive. So you're able to be nicer you, to your own self. There are times when I will say things to myself in my mind that I would never allow another human being to say to me. Through mindfulness, I'm able to catch myself in those negatives quicker 
and I'm able to be more kind to myself than I was before. Thanks, Sandra. To end things, I'm going to ask Patricia to lead you in a short guided meditation. So we'll do that now. First thing that I would suggest is if you're listening to this right now, so even just as I'm sitting here, if you have anything in your hands to just put that down and just seeing where your body is in space in this moment. So maybe you're sitting in a chair, maybe you're standing, maybe you're walking, maybe you're lying down. And I would suggest that just for this next few minutes to let go of any expectations that you have of yourself, that you have to do anything or fix anything or improve anything, to just allow yourself to minimize all the distractions that you have. So if you have your phone out, there's other things that you're looking at to kind of minimize those. And then what I invite you to do is we'll all just take a few conscious breaths together. So let your posture be both alert So your spine is relatively straight, but yet relaxed. And then I just invite you to take a full deep breath in. So breathing into the belly, up into the ribs and the chest, a full inhalation. Pause maybe at the top of that inhalation. And then as you exhale, see what it's like to just soften a little bit the shoulders away from the ears, soften the muscles around the eyes and the jaw. So we're not trying to relax, but we can just notice where we're maybe holding tension in the body. We're just bringing awareness and we can soften around those areas. So let's take a few more conscious breaths. So full deep breath in, pause. As you exhale, see if you can extend the exhale as you let your shoulders drop and feel where your body is touching either the floor or the chair. So feet where they're touching, where the hands are touching. You might feel the air touching your skin and just notice in this moment if the air that's touching your skin feels cool or warm. And as you bring awareness to this present moment, you might also notice if the air is passing quickly or slowly across the face. You can open your awareness to sounds. So not trying to make anything happen, but just noticing the sounds in your environment right now that are coming and going. You can hear my voice and whatever sounds are there in your environment. And then with the same kind of open receptivity to just notice what's here in the mind. Just notice if the mind is busy in this moment or distracted or calm and realize that one is not better than the other. We're not trying to change or fix anything. We're just noticing it's like this right now. And just check in and notice how you're feeling. So notice what emotions are here. You can notice if you're feeling agitated or tired or calm or even resistance. You can notice those things. And just notice what's here in the body. So how is this all showing up in the face and the neck and the shoulders? See if you can stay with it as you scan down through the arms and the hands. And the chest, and the ribs, the belly, the back, the seat the legs and the feet. And again, it can be helpful to connect with those places where your body's making contact with the floor or the chair. And then I just invite everyone to just set the intention to follow the sensation of this next inhale all the way in. And set the intention to follow the sensation of this next exhale all the way out. However you're breathing right now is perfect. So there's no proper way to breathe in formal mindfulness meditation. doesn't matter if your breath is shallow or deep. Just see if you can do that maybe three or four more times. Just follow, set the intention to follow the sensation of this next in-breath and follow the sensation of this next out-breath. And just recognizing that there is a body here that's breathing. And as best you can, keep this practice going of following the sensation of the in-breath, following the sensation of the next out-breath, and staying with the sensations of this actual body that's here, that's breathing. In the background, there'll be thoughts and emotions and sounds, but in the foreground, there's the intention to just rest your awareness gently on the body breathing. You can continue this practice for as long as it feels comfortable for you, or if this is the end of your practice, a great way to close 
is to just offer yourself a little bit of kindness. If it feels authentic and genuine, you can even put a hand at your heart and just notice that whatever's going on in your mind or your body or your heart in this moment, that it's normal. Other people experience whatever you're experiencing. And just to offer yourself a moment of saying, you know, can I be kind to myself? Can I be compassionate with myself? And, you know, we may choose to also close by saying that we, we do this practice in not just for ourselves, but so that we have a more calm mind, a more open heart when we're relating to others. So we can dedicate the merits of our practice to the well-being of the people in our worlds. Well, thank you for coming. That was great. Great. Thanks for having me. Thank you to both Patricia and Sandra for their insights on this topic. You can learn more about Patricia Galaxy at theartofdialogue.com. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Military Lifestyle. To learn more about this episode and to check out our other resources like the deployment app, go to esquimaltmfrc.com. A special thanks to Organized Sound Productions for bringing our idea to life. Please share this podcast with your military family or with someone living the lifestyle. Subscribe to The Military Lifestyle on your favorite podcast app. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you for listening.